Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of the Lakes. Our celebrant this morning is our pastor, Father Jerry. We will now begin the liturgy for the Epiphany of the Lord. Our opening hymn is number 105, We Three Kings. Welcome to all in church and those watching on the internet. Special welcome to our confirmation candidates and their sponsors who will be enrolled as they seek to be confirmed later on this spring. So let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. May the peace of Christ, the love of our God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are still in the Christmas season. Society has pretty much put all that stuff away, but we're keeping going. It's going to end actually tomorrow, but uh, today we'll take uh, down the decorations. But we are celebrating um, the uh, gift of God in our midst. So let's remember God's infinite mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of all nations. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you govern with justice and peace. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you protect the poor and save the afflicted. Lord, have mercy. Lord. And mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let's praise God with the Gloria. Glory to God in the high.
So let us pray. O oh God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought together to behold the beauty of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's be seated and hear God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. judgment endow the king and with your justice the king's son he shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment Lord every name on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All the kings shall pay him homage. All nations 
nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For shall he rescue the poor when he cries out? And the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co heirs members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you you shall come a ruler." who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold... The star that had been seen at its rising preceded them until they came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold 
frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Many of us have been following Buffalo Bills football player DeMar Hamlin, who suffered a cardiac arrest this past week while playing a game. He was resuscitated on the field and transferred to a level one trauma center. He's still there, but he's improving incredibly. He's off the ventilator and he's tweeting out all kinds of good stuff. When this all happened, the stadium became hushed and both teams gathered on the field, kneeling together in prayer for Damar Hamlin. Many of them were crying, visibly upset. People have been praying, and I've had my own prayers going up to Damar too. Luckily, Damar's mother was with him at the game and rode in the ambulance to the hospital. Apparently, he's quite a guy to give back. He had sent up a GoFundMe page or some kind of page to raise money for toys for a kid at Christmas. His goal was to do 2,500. Right now, it's the goal has actually raised over $8 million. He truly has a heart to give back. God bless him. The game was suspended and now won't be replayed. I like football. Football is not my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. This past Christmas Eve, NFL played football games. On Christmas Day, NFL played football games. I've talked to families that they could not get together for Christmas celebrations with their families because some of their young people had games scheduled on Christmas Eve. I was not happy when I heard all this and saw that coming down. This is the time when we celebrate the birth of the Messiah. The Messiah the promise that God would save the world. What happens is profound spiritual growth comes from a deep spiritual wound. Maybe the wound of Damar Hamlin will shake people to their senses. Today is Epiphany. Three kings, astrologers, astrologers, we don't really know exactly what they were. But we do know they were on a journey. And somehow they came to find the end of their journey with the newborn king of the Jews. They had sought help from Herod. If you don't know, Herod was nuts. It talks about in their when he became upset, then the whole of Jerusalem did because they all knew he was crazy. There was a saying, it was safer to be a pig in the kingdom of Herod than one of your relatives. What happened is they listened after they saw and they did not go on to Herod. They went back by another route. Anytime we encounter God, we change our lives, we go by a different route. There's a story of Teddy Stollard. He was a student who didn't show interest in school, wore wrinkled clothes, his hair was not combed, He's one of those kids that had a deadpan face, no expression, just a stare. When Mrs. Thompson, his teacher, spoke to Teddy, <coughs> excuse me, was always in monotone. He was unattractive, unmotivated, distant. He was just plain hard to like. Even though 
his teacher, she said she loved everybody in the class equally. That wasn't really true. Whenever she marked Teddy's papers, she got a certain perverse pleasure of putting out X's next to the wrong answers. And when it was clearly he failed it, she put F's on his paper with some kind of flair. And really, she should have known better because she knew the history of this young boy. First grade, it said in the records, Teddy shows promise with his work and attitude, but poor home situation. Second grade, Teddy could do better. His mother is seriously ill. She received little help at home. Third grade, Teddy's a good boy, too serious. He's a slow learner. His mother died this year. Fourth grade, Teddy is a very slow but well-behaved. His father shows no interest. Well, that year, Christmas came, and the boys and girls in Miss Thompson's class brought her Christmas gifts and piled them on her desk. They crowded around the desk to watch her open them. Among the presents was one from Teddy Stollard. She was surprised that he brought her a gift. It was in, wrapped in brown paper bag with scotch tape. And when she opened it, two things fell out. A bracelet with uh, rhinestones half missing and a half a bottle of perfume. And on the words, the package, it simply read, for Miss Thompson from Teddy. Now, the other boys and girls began to snicker and giggle about the gifts, but Miss Thompson had the sense to silence them by immediately putting on the bracelet and putting on some of the perfume and then passing it around so everybody could smell it. And pretty soon, they caught on to the oohs and ahs of the gift that was there. Well, at the end of the day, when school was over, the other children had left. Teddy lingered behind. He came slowly to her desk and said softly, Miss Thompson, Miss Thompson, you smell just like my mother. And her bracelet looks real pretty on you, too. I'm glad you like my present. Well, when Teddy left, Miss Thompson got down on her knees and begged God for forgiveness. The next day, when the children came to school, they were welcomed by a new teacher. She was no longer the same person. She had become an agent of God. She was now a person committed to loving her children and doing things for them that would live on after her. She helped all children, especially the slow ones, especially Teddy Stollard. By the end of the school year, Teddy showed dramatic improvement. In fact, he got ahead of some of the other kids in his class. So she didn't hear from Teddy for a long time. And then she received a note that read, Dear Miss Thompson, I wanted you to be the first to know that I will be graduating from second in my class. Love, Teddy Stollard. Four years later, another note came. Dear Miss Thompson, they just told me I will be graduating first in my class. I wanted you to be the first to know. The university is not easy, but I like it. Love, Teddy Stollard. And four years later, another note. <clears throat> Dear Miss Thompson, as today, I am Theodore Stollard, M.D. How about that? 
I wanted you to be the first to know, and I'm getting married next month on the 27th, to be exact. And I wanted you to come and sit where my mother would sit if she were alive. You're the only family I have now. Dad died last year. Love, Teddy Stollard. Miss Thompson went to the wedding and sat where Teddy's mother would have sat. She deserved to sit there. She had done something for Teddy that he could never forget, all because Teddy had shared his mom's bracelet and perfume, the only gifts he had to give and share. A woman by the name of Melody Beatty, who uh, writes for an addiction recovery, says this. Many people say, I don't have much to share. Be grateful for whatever talents you have. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. Folks, we are called to follow Jesus. All we have to do is put God first. And God will do the rest. May we always seek the Lord that gives us life and we will be just fine. And when we do that, yep, you can watch football. Today, we have our confirmation folks, candidates here, preparing to take their place in the community as uh, confirmed members fully initiated. So it is with great joy and gladness that we, the church, welcome our confirmation class here today. We invite them to make a formal commitment to continue the process of preparing themselves to receive the sacrament of confirmation. Confirmation candidates, please stand when I call your name and come forward with your sponsors and just line up in front of the altar here. Andrew Seabury, Isaac Zoller, Kellen Kelly, Gavin Holden, Braden Christensen, Shane Volrath. Did he make it? And, and finally, Amelia Valentine. And so, I got some questions to ask you. Some of you got cheat sheets, but we'll just do the best you can here, folks. Candidates, what do you ask of God's church? Just say it all together. They want to become a candidate for confirmation. Right on. That's a good thing. Are you willing to apply yourself through prayer, study, service, participation in the confirmation programs? If so, answer, we are. Candidates, what does this period of formation offer you? Yep, completion of their... Uh, to become fully initiated in the church. So you got baptism, uh, communion, and confirmation. So in seeking to be fully initiating into the Catholic Church, are you prepared to listen to the apostles' instructions? Gather with us for prayer and join us in love and service of others? If so, answer, we are. <coughs> Excuse me. Sponsors and all of you gathered in this assembly, are you ready to help these candidates on their faith journey to follow Christ? If so, answer, we are. we are. So, Father of mercy, we thank you for these candidates who have sought and summoned them in many ways, and they have turned to seek you. You have called them today, and they have answered in our response. We praise you, Lord, and we bless you. So, candidates and sponsors, please turn and face each other. 
Candidates, we now invite you to receive the sign of your life in Christ by the signing of the senses. Candidates, receive the sign of the cross on your foreheads as a reminder of your baptism into Christ's saving death and resurrection. Candidates, receive the sign of the cross on your ears that you may hear the voice of the Lord. Candidates, receive the sign of the cross on your eyes that you may see the glory of God. <clears throat> Candidates, receive the cross on your lips that you may respond to the word of God. Candidates, receive <clears throat> excuse me, the sign of the cross over your heart that Christ may dwell there by faith. Candidates, receive the <clears throat> sign of the cross on your shoulders that you bear the gentle yoke of Christ. And candidates, receive the sign of the cross on your hands, that Christ may be known in the work that you do. Candidates, receive the sign of the cross on your feet, that you may walk in the way of Christ. Candidates and sponsors, please turn now and face the altar. I sign you with the sign of eternal life. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, by the cross and resurrection of your Son, you have given life to your people. Your servants have received the sign of the cross. Make them living proof of its saving power and ask them to persevere as they follow in the footsteps of Christ. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once you guys all turn around, let's give them a little love. <clears throat> <laughs> we'll let you go back to your places and we'll rise for our profession of faith on page 10 we'll have the apostles creed so as we pray I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, let's, because we have God first in our life, and we are God's children, let us ask the Lord what we need this day. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, May the Lord bless the church with committed men and women, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, through the mercy of God, may all come to know the gospel message and follow what is right and work for peace, reconciliation, and an end to the war in Ukraine, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, and for those who love and care for them, may Christ's healing presence be with them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God strengthen us in our relationship with Christ as our King, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, May they experience the eternal joy of the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that all may find compassion and love in her midst, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Clifford Ince, remembered at this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer requests written in the church bulletin, 
and those we mention silently in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear. Lord, you've heard the needs of your people. You saw the witness of faith for these confirmation candidates. We now ask you to grant all we ask this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated as our tithes are gathered and the altar is prepared. Our offertory hymn is number 96, What Child Is This? Bless to you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have bread to offer, which earth has given. Human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. And bless to you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us a spiritual drink. Pray that our gifts of bread and wine, our tithes and offerings, be acceptable to God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that you have made. His name, for our good and good laws. Lord, look with favor, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which we offer now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations 
And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <clears throat> Lord, you're holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into the passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread through this troubled world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all baptized believers. <coughs> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep with the hope of the resurrection and now who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her holy spouse, St. Joseph, with all the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's rise, join our voices, and pray as Jesus taught, our Father, who art. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await with blessed hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. Greet the people right around you with some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 341, One Bread, One Body.
Some quick announcements. Knights of Columbus is having a state raffle and their tickets are on sale after mass. It benefits, a portion comes back and benefits our local Knights of Columbus programs. Diocesan Music Workshop is being held the first weekend in February at St. Joe's in, in Amory, Friday and a Saturday. You can go to Friday and or Saturday. And for the parishes, if you want to go, the parishes will pay for the cost. So if you're looking for an intentional break from distractions of daily life to a quiet time with the Lord, then please join us on Thursdays anytime from 9.30 a.m. to noon starting this week on the 12th at Thursdays for Eucharistic Adoration. And St. Joe's is going to do one, but that will be in the bulletin. There's a sign up in the back if you can do that because once the Blessed Sacrament is on the altar, somebody has to be there all the times. Also, right after Mass, we'll be taking down the Christmas decorations. And so if you can help, that'd be great. We have a tree that needs to go from a storage out to the garage because we're not going to use it anymore. And also, if um, the point set is up here, we're going to leave up here, but some of the real ones here if you donated it, you're welcome to take it home. If you need one, you can take it home. If you know somebody who didn't get to church, would appreciate one, please take it. I might want to wrap it up so it doesn't freeze before it gets to the car, but there you go. Also, St. Joe's uh, having their ice fishing contest at the end of January. Tickets on sale at the Balsam Lake Hardware Store here. And uh, a lot of people, did anybody get their church envelopes? No, we'll check into that, see what happened. But I think with the storm, something went wrong there. We'll figure that out. So just welcome to our uh, guests, and especially those online. If you are looking for a church home, do consider uh, Our Lady of the Lakes. We'd be glad to have you journey with us. So congrats again to our candidates. We're so proud of you. And uh, have a blessed week. May we look out for the Teddy Stollards in our life. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord, go before us with heavenly light, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you willed us to participate. This we pray through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to do God's work. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth hymn is number 84, Angels We Have Heard on High. Thank you. 